assalamu alaikum ji and uh, good afternoon everybody um, for joining uh, um, the third session of our live webinars um, series um, uh, hosted by igi holdings um, i wish to thank all of you who have taken your time um, uh, you know out of your precious uh, um, you know um, engagements uh, and have joined us for this uh, session um, um, you know um, just a little bit of housekeeping rules initially um, as we always go through um, uh, the moderator in this particular case uh, you know the the expert who's going to be running the show with us uh, or the webinar with us uh, mr uh, jamshed hussain will be engaging with all the panelists uh, on the areas of focus primarily for the property uh, insurance um, the audi as audience you are uh, you know you have the flexibility to submit your questions online via the zoom messaging tool um you know any uh, of your uh, questions uh, will be you know will be viewed by um the you know the subject expert uh, and he will be uh, choosing um you know certain you know questions based on the time that we have um the slides and the recordings uh, will be available um for the session uh, just after uh, the session is over and can be viewed uh, offline any time of your convenience um and in case uh, you come across any technical difficulties um uh, you are requested to reach out to the zoom help center um since we are using zooms um you know um, facilities so just quickly a recap on where we are today we are in the third session alhamdulillah um the first series of the live webinars um is being hosted uh, by igi holdings covering a wide area of uh, 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 you know of topics uh, of mutual interest uh, where between us uh, as insurers and our audience yourselves as customers as partners uh, as stakeholders um and we wanted to sort of share with you our experiences uh, uh you know in this challenging time of the pandemic so today's session uh, is uh, for property uh, coverage where uh you know there'll be a discussion on uh, the lessons learned and the industry's likely response to the various client queries the panel will also look at the suggestions some of the suggestions made by ccp to the industry and the the discussion will also try to cover any changes that we can foresee coming in from the reinsurer's perspective uh with respect to the property treaties so um going into the streaming platforms uh, as always we are running live from zoom from facebook uh, linkedin and youtube uh, feel free to join our session from any of these streaming platforms uh, and uh, you know uh, i would now uh, sort of uh, 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 introduce you to uh, our subject expert uh, mr jamshed hussain uh, he will be leading uh, the conversation today he heads a property casualty and commercial uh, business under the banner of igi general insurance um and uh, i welcome mr uh, jamshed hussain for this session uh and uh, hand over the conversation to you to take it forward uh, for the benefit of the audience today thank you uh, thank you thank you nawan uh, and thank you very much everyone uh, for joining in um, i'm really thankful to the panelist um a brief introduction uh, we have with us uh, khuram ali khan saab uh, uh, he you know he is a star player in in the industry um, for the last 24 years he he spent his uh, most of his time in uh, efu and now he is heading um, uh, a broker uh, a change role uh, a difficult role so inshallah he'll be um, he'll be the star again in this um, uh, sector um, arif um, you know arif uh, he has spent most of his time in saudi but he worked for nicl jubli and adam ji uh, briefly uh, for the last 7 years he is in saudi re um, heading uh, he is a director facilitative for property and casualty so we'll be um, asking him questions uh, as as a reinsurer uh, ruban um, he has spent most of his time in saudi market middle east market um you know he's he's more of a intellectual um when compared to us um, uh, uh, in pakistan and uh, you know very learned uh, underwriter and uh, uh, will be having his comments on different 
uh, aspects of this uh, topic uh, asan jamal mashallah you know he he has spent uh, years on risk management um, in uh, downstream power uh, cement complex industries so we'll be having his comments on risk management side of this uh, topic so we'll uh, a brief introduction of where we are today so with this covid 19 starting in pakistan in march but starting in um, in china in november december so we have a health crisis uh, this is the biggest crisis after spanish flu uh, in the last 100 years economic crisis uh, you know we have uh, now a, a depression throughout the world pakistan's uh, economy is is under contraction first time in the last 60 60 plus years uh, financial crisis most of the banks in the world uh, central banks in the world have intervened um, as as you know in pakistan um, the government has given financial aid to all the most of the industries uh, so looking at the industry uh, you will see that um, uh, the biggest industry um, uh, we have uh, who are um, hit by this uh, covid environment is oil and gas air and travel banks insurance we have uh, you know uh, low sales in pakistan and, and throughout the world the retail high tech and pharma industries were not hit as much as uh, we were expecting um in pakistan in the last 4 uh, months you see that uh, the the KSC uh, Karachi Stock Exchange Pakistan Stock Exchange went down by 30% but now recovered now it is operating at around you know 16% uh, down from the 31st December position so you see that most of the industries um, are uh, performing below the market average uh, oil and gas hit uh, banks automobile is in you know trouble uh, there is no sale uh, not a single unit sold in april uh, for this industry so we'll start the session um so with this uh, uh, with this uh, environment uh, most of the business were closed or curtailed or uh, you know they were feeling having a loss sales and revenue decline uh, during this uh, environment so the, we, we were having uh, different questions coming in from the uh, clients in respect of business interruption and even physical damage coverage under the property policy so we thought that you know let's have a a uh, brief discussion on uh, what is covered in in property policies and what is not covered in pakistan and uh, in the region uh, in pakistan specifically 90% of the policies property policies sold are um, fire policies so in fire policies you see you need to have a destruction or damage or physical damage Um, by fire or allied peril so allied peril means that you need to have um, uh, a flood or a earthquake um, or or fire or lightning um, to uh, uh, to have a coverage in the policy lm7 wording is is popular in uh, in the middle east um, and throughout the world um, this is an all risk wording and it needs again accidental physical loss destruction and damage cmi policies uh, munifi cmi policies are uh, used in pakistan for complex risk so they need again sudden physical which could not reasonably be foreseen manuscript wording these wordings are used by the brokers for complex programs um, but these policies again define loss or damage as direct sudden unforeseen and physical accidental physical damage so so uh, you know going through this slide it's uh, it means that for all mainly all policies uh, covering property you need to have a physical uh, loss or destruction or sudden physical loss or accidental physical loss um, so you know covid environment uh, didn't cause any accidental or sudden physical loss so you cannot have a, uh, a loss covered under your um, property policy the second question arises so if 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 you don't have a physical loss does your policy covers your business interruption because you have a loss of profit during this couple of months of lockdown <clears throat> 
the policy is loss of profit in consequence of loss destruction or damage indemnifiable under the fire policy so you need to have a loss covered if you have a destruction or damage under the fire policy so if you don't have a uh, loss or destruction you don't have cover for loss of profit without any loss or loss uh, destruction or damage you don't cover loss of profit cmi policy again uh, you know it, it defines again that you know you need to have a material damage section uh, loss or damage indemnifiable uh, under the operational material damage section so if you don't have any um, any loss or damage which is covered under the material damage section you you can't have a cover um, indemnifiable under the loss of profit policy wording manuscript wording um, this again define coverage as if the property covered is lost destroyed or damaged by an insured event not excluded by the policy and business carried by the insured is in consequence of interrupted or interfered so you need to have again loss destruction or damaged property under the section one so both the both these sections section one property damage section section two loss of profit section they need to have a physical sudden accidental loss to trigger any loss of profit uh, by the client so the likely responses uh, from us as insurers is that you know the coverage question is driven by the policy wording so you need to uh, as a as a client you need to read or um, uh, yourself or with your consultants with your brokers uh, with your insurers the policy wording uh, each policy wording has different uh, triggers so you need to see uh, which policy wording uh, you have been using or you have been advised um, traditional policies uh, insured physical loss or damage and they need to have a uh, necessary to trigger a response under the uh, policy so physical loss or damage you need to have possible contaminations proximity to other contaminated premises or fear on the part of the public is not a physical loss or damage um, so this is the likely responses from the insurers so these are the three um, slides um, so we'll we'll go to the discussion topics and i'll start my questions with the panelist uh, coming to you um, Kuram Saab, the first question is is there any bi uh, or conti contingent uh, business interruption coverage available for the insured if um, uh, if there is no um, uh, you know, if, if there is no physical loss or damage uh, to the property thank you jankir assalamu alaikum uh, as jankir has rightly mentioned we need a trigger for any policy to pay a claim and the trigger needs to be an insured event but before i go into the basics of do we have cover available or not. I just would like to share a small taboo that I have lived my life with, uh, especially in Pakistan. Mm, the perception in Pakistan about insurers is that insurers are always ready and keen to collect premiums, but they're not all ready and keen to pay the claims. Yes. So that's, yes. A, so that's a perception that I've lived my life in the last 25, 26 years. And unfortunately, it's such a wrong perception. People think that Going on the insurance road is a one-way traffic in which you always go and deposit premiums and never come to collect claims. I have, on the contrary, all my life found insurers to be very liberal in paying claims. So I just wanted to clarify that this taboo that whatever exists in the market is wrong. And insurers do actually pay claim and they pay claims, uh, in my opinion, in a very liberal environment. So coming back to your question in which you've asked do we have coverage under this BI policy or CBI extension for the insured in Pakistan? Uh, just going a little deeper into the subject, uh, I don't think we have coverage which is clearly defined at the moment, and there's a gray area. Uh, historically, if we go back, there has been a specific endorsement by the name of infectious and contagious diseases on a standalone basis. That would have been uh, looked upon for any coverage in that particular area. If that endorsement is not a part of your policy, you are not covered. That can be very specific. 
in my opinion. If that endorsement is not a part of your policy, you are not covered. But going back, if somebody has that endorsement and wants to claim, he needs to make sure that as Vinshade explained, you have a trigger that leads to an event which is covered under the policy. So I believe uh, this answers my question. This answers your question rather, that do we have coverage or not? And before concluding, uh, again, a small uh, perception in the market that we normally have. Insurance contracts are legal documents and they're drafted by top dollar lawyers. And uh, lawyers have this capability of interpreting them any way they want, any way they want. So if we have a situation in which we have a difference of opinion and we have a lawyer, he can make it payable or he can make it not payable. I believe you can answer your question. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, my second question to you will be that uh, what impact on property line you foresee in next uh, six to 12 months um, in, in the region and specifically in Pakistan? Um, uh, I have read news and articles and I've had emails in defining the losses that have so far been reported because of this pandemic. And the last one that I read was an email from Deutsch which basically highlights that up to $203 billion of claims have been registered in Lloyds so far. They are defining it as an equivalent of 9-11 event. So if you look at it globally, uh, things are going to change because we have huge amount of losses that have been registered so far. But if you look at it locally in Pakistan, the dynamics is different. As again, you mentioned, uh, Pakistan is not a very risk averse society. The insurance penetration in Pakistan, unfortunately, is very low. Uh, insurance is only bought when it is lenders driven. I have seldom seen people or clients who buy insurance on their own. In fact, I will throw a question to the audience and I will ask them how many of them have household insurances at this point in time with themselves. And I'm yeah. sure not 10% of the audience who are present right now would come up with a yes answer. So we are only looking at insurance when we have some threat or we have some need. Uh, and most of these drivers come from the lenders. They threaten you <laughs> and they create the need. So insurance is driven by them. So if look at it, looking at it uh, in terms of numbers, the fire and light rental policies or the all this policy or the VI policies in comparison are very, very few. Uh, and it, Claims which are relating to these policies in Pakistan in Nafsi will be very far and few. The Pakistan market will not have a swarm of claims like the international market. In my opinion, under the current scenario, but things will change. Things will change because all the insurers in Pakistan will be renewing their treaties, majority of them by December. And when they will go for the renewal of the treaties, they will be buying number one expensive treaties and they will be buying treaties with exclusions. So at that point, the customers in Pakistan will face higher premiums and limited coverages. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, coming to you, Arif, um, after this pandemic, as reinsurers and, and uh, you know close contact with the London markets, what changes do you foresee coming from the reinsurers? Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Jamshed. Uh, you have already very well explained that the standard property market wordings they do not cover uh, pandemics or infectious diseases. Even though from April onwards, what we are witnessing is that reinsurers are applying exclusions to exclude any loss, damage, or expenses related to pandemics or infectious diseases. There are different wordings used by different reinsurers at the moment. Specifically on the facultative side, uh, infectious disease exclusion is applied on almost all the contracts now, unless an extension is specifically bought with the agreement of the reinsurer. Generally, reinsurers are not very keen to grant such, a, such an extension at the moment in view of the huge exposures and the difficulty in pricing such exposures. However, I believe we need to keep in mind that theoretically speaking, 
standard property insurance, which actually originated from fire insurance, intends to cover only physical loss or damage to the covered property and any resultant business interruption loss. So any BI loss without triggering the material damage section of the policy were not intended to be covered and not priced as well in the premium charge. On the treaty side, we have seen in the recent first April renewals in Japanese, Korean and Indian markets that such exclusions are applied in some form or another in majority of the contracts. Lastly, I would like to say that risks like pandemics are considered fundamental risks as they affect large population. So this uh, theoretically makes them, if not uninsurable, difficult to insure. But as we know now, there are exceptions where insurance products are available for some fundamental risks. We may see in future new products made to cover losses originating from infectious diseases and pandemics. But definitely this will come with a price. So I hope this answers your question. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, um, Arif. Uh, coming to you, Asim. <clears throat> As a client advocate, what will you be telling your client in respect of risk management and what should a uh, client be looking to improve on their premises during this uh, pandemic-like uh, situation? So, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Jamshed. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, in my view, uh, as the risk landscape of most of the organizations have been changed dramatically because of this uh, COVID-19 situation, and uh, I think it's time for the organizations to reassess their risk management, management strategies. Uh, I'm categorically explaining here about uh, the complex energy and power risk here. And for this, uh, London Market Association has recently published uh, one of the risk engineering questionnaires uh, and would specifically target for those plants which are, which, whose operations are directly affected by this COVID-19 situation. So this particular questionnaire, which I'm just discussing here, is basically uh, used by the underwriters, risk engineers, and as well as clients. Uh, the primary aim of this questionnaire is to ensure that if there is any changes in the normal plant operations, then definitely there must be some risk associated with these type of changes. And clients need to ensure that these type of risks can be addressed adequately. So basically there are four areas of concern by the insurers and, in, and I think the client needs to address these four areas. The first one is your plant status. Uh, like I just mentioned, if there's a COVID-19 situation, so client need to address or assess how the plant operations are affected by these COVID-19 situation. It means uh, they need to address about the uh, production rates, uh, how there is an impact on their uh, feed stock, raw material, uh, and the product line distribution. And if there is some sort of temporary shutdowns, then these type of risk needs to be addressed by the insured or client. Uh, another important area uh, in this particular questionnaire is about operations and manning. Like a uh, client need to address or need to know how their permanent or contractual staff are affected by this COVID-19 situation. And the third most important area is inspection and maintenance area. Because there are some critical maintenance and inspection activities which are deferred by this COVID-19 situation at plant sites. And I think uh, it's very important for the plant team, or at least the client, uh, that they need to assess the condition of the plant if these type of critical maintenance and inspection activities are deferred by this COVID-19 situation. And obviously they need to know about the availability of the spare parts uh, that needs to be uh, delivered to the sites in this type of situation. And the last important area is management of change. So it means client need to know how this type of management of change procedures can be managed in this particular uh, pandemic situation. So I think uh, these are the four key areas which needs to be addressed by the client and uh, insurers are very much concerned about these four areas with respect to risk management in their plant. So I think that's uh, answer my question. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Asan. Uh, coming to you, uh, Khurram Sahib, before uh, going to the next question, uh, you know, very pertinent uh, comments by Asan on, uh, on the maintenance and um, schedule inspections and maintenance by the uh, client on um, on complex risks. So, what what is your comment if if the um, if the renewal is due in April May? Um, uh, what um, advices you will give to the customer and uh, how the coverage will be um, arranged uh, f uh, during this uh, environment? Asan <clears throat> rightly very rightly mentioned this aspect, and it's going to be a very critical aspect, uh, which in my opinion can be the game changer. Uh, insurers always value information and base the coverage and judgment of pricing based on the value or based on the information that they get from the insured or the broker. So if that information is not made available in time, they will not be able to assess the risk. And there's a very small way of measuring a risk. If you have high risk, you have high premiums. If you have low risk, you have low premiums. So if a plant is not able to undertake regular maintenance or annual turnarounds, and we have renewals in April and May and June coming up in a very short period of time, then it's very, very important that all clients and insurers and brokers take a head start and get engaged right now so that everybody in the equation knows exactly where is the standpoint. It just would give them at least an understanding in terms of timeline that this is something that is not achievable probably today but can be managed within a window of, let's say, 90 days or 90 days. And based on that, an arrangement can be made. But if you just walk in into a renewal without this information, then you should have a problem and insurers can deny coverage. So the key lies, the key lies in taking a head start, getting engaged right now, and sharing as much information as possible for all the parties to make a fair assessment and move forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much um, for your valuable uh, comments. Uh, coming to you, Roban, uh, do you foresee business models for insurance companies as well as clients changing post-COVID in terms of infrastructure and distribution of uh, business? I think uh, uh, the easiest answer for this would be that yes, you know, uh, you basically have a pre-COVID situation and then you have a post-COVID world that uh, we are basically going to be living in. The insurance business in itself, it remains the same. You know, it's uh, dependent on the law of large numbers. It's dependent on contracts. It's dependent on uh, indemnifying uh, insurance. It's, I think, more to do with how businesses will be done that, that will change uh, more so from an insurance and even from the client's perspective. You know, uh, what we are doing today, probably we won't be doing 10 years from now, it would be quite different. Uh, simple example, uh, Zoom, the software that we're utilizing today is valued maybe uh, the same value of uh, six, seven top airlines in the world right now. So the change is going to happen and, and it's just a matter of where it's uh, going to be focused on. So the question really is, you know, uh, what do insurers do about uh, the change that, that's coming in? I think uh, it has to do with uh, two particular uh, things that they need to keep in mind. One would be uh, to have some sort of proactive communication during this whole process. So, you know, yeah. like you have this uh, seminar sessions where you're engaging with clients, you're trying to educate them. I think that's a very good way of engaging uh, with clients. And then similarly, topics that Essen was talking about, you know, uh, what kind of things they need to keep in mind from a risk uh, management perspective. Uh, you really need to share that information with uh, your clients at the end of the day and how that really uh, can impact their coverage uh, one way or the other. The other major change that would happen is, again, uh, uh, both from how we're working right now, how we're communicating, how uh, we're able to engage with uh, uh, our clients, how quickly we need to engage with our clients as well. So I think uh, the, the way of how we are communicating, how we're managing things, that will change quite a bit. Uh, in this whole angle, what we really need to uh, keep in mind is that we need to empathize with uh, the stakeholders, both internally and externally. So you have your own employees uh, sitting in at their home in, in a new location. 
uh, how you're able to engage them and how you're able to get the best out of them. Similarly, from a client's perspective, if you are unable to go to your office, how do you expect your clients to go to uh, their office? Uh, are there certain uh, clauses in your policy that need to be amended looking at you know, uh, the, the current situation? Uh, how can you assist them in, in their cash crunch uh, position apart from uh, discounts that I, I think would probably be uh, talking uh, about going forward. So it, the, in, in very short, things will change. It's, it's been, uh, it will become a bit exponential, but uh, things will change from what we see. Thank you. Thank you, Ruan. Thank you very much. Um, uh, coming to you, um, Arif, um, with the regulators asking uh, primary markets in Pakistan as well as throughout the world um, to facilitate clients in terms of premium payment uh, warranties, what uh, flexibilities reinsurers are providing to the markets? Yes, Jamshed, I think uh, there is no straight yes and no answer to it at the moment. Reinsurers are generally flexible and they may look at such requests on case to case basis. Uh, I think uh, I cannot add anything more at the moment, and I hope this answers your question. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, SN Saab, um, is there any way we can facilitate customers? You know, how do you convince customers where there is no solution available um, for, for their coverage problem? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a good question. Um, in this COVID-19 situation, uh, we have seen uh, that most of the global insurers right now uh, applying uh, two major exclusion clauses in all their renewals and new business accounts. The first one is uh, a communicable disease clause, which is LMA 5393. And the second one is coronavirus exclusion clause, which is LMA 5391. So both these clauses are issued by London Market Association. So it means, yes, we can say that still uh, there is no specific insurance related solution for this pandemic situation. Uh, but I think uh, there are some non-insurance related solutions available for the client uh, in order to cater for this pandemic situation. And the one is important one is I think uh, pandemic preparedness and uh, response strategies. So in this type of strategy, uh, there are three important steps which clients need to follow. The first step is uh, the planning stage uh, in which the client needs to identify those potential areas which are directly affected by this pandemic situation. Like for example, uh, your workforce, uh, your travel restrictions, supply chain challenges, and obviously critical business operations. In the second stage, the client needs, which is a recovery, uh, which is a response stage, sorry. Uh, in this type of stage, the client needs to develop some uh, robust crisis management response and strategies in order to counter those risks which are associated with this pandemic situation. And the last strategy, the last step is basically the recovery stage in which a uh, client needs to develop some effective business continuity plan that will definitely identify and protect the critical business operations of the client. And uh, I've seen uh, some, uh, some big brokers are now uh, providing such type of risk management services or risk uncertainty services for this particular pandemic response plan uh, to the clients. And uh, uh, by doing this, definitely client will definitely uh, counter for this pandemic situation. I think that answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Essen. Um, um, can I can I sort of request? Uh, you know, I just I did, you know listening to all your conversations, uh, yes. um, Jamshed. I just I just wanted to have a, a quick question uh, or you know an observation about uh, claims. I think um, communication, uh, very rightly so uh, said so by Roban and all of you as well, is extremely important. I think the industry. Um, if I understand correctly, is ex, you know uh, must be experiencing a surge in claims when it comes to business interruption, for example. Um, and you know while some lines of business like motor may see a decline in claims, the others will be seeing an an increase in claims. So they 
I'm sure there would be uh, operational challenges um, that would, uh, you know, restrict the insurers to really reach out to the customers and support them, you know, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a loss adjuster, whether it is, you know, uh, setting a time uh, with the occupants or the, you know, or the owners of the property. So as IGI, I just wanted to understand from you, um, uh, Jamshed, um, um, you know, have we sort of reviewed and uh, implemented our uh, strategies um, for this expected surge and also the challenges that come with the restriction of movement and logistic, logistically um, placing ourselves and the loss adjusters uh, to handle, um, you know, scenarios like that? Uh, yes, Noman. Uh, uh, for the last seven, eight years, I, as IGI, you know, we we have moved from uh, paper uh, paperwork environment to uh, to paperless environment. So we have a digital platform available in claims uh, to pay and to facilitate customers in, in in these types of cases. For the last two months, um, we haven't uh, had any disruption. Um, you know, in terms of paying claims to the client and 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 receiving their uh, intimations. So um, yes, the claim guys were sitting home, but they were sit, uh, they were working, they were receiving claims, they were uh, paying claims. Um, we had uh, issues uh, for some period where we cannot send um, the surveyors to the um, uh, to the client premises. But uh, when it started, um, now the 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 surveyors can digitally. Um, uh, load all their reports on our um, website and then um, and then we can you know take it forward and pay the claims uh, as quickly as possible um, you know whether they are these are uh, motor claims or property claims so uh, and and hopefully uh, most of the markets in Pakistan uh, should be geared up to service client uh, like this thank you so much thanks a lot for the for the for the clarity yeah, thank you. And and I'll go back to Ruban. Um, Ruban, uh, you know, we uh, how can we facilitate customers, um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, claims and premiums um, in this environment? Uh, I think it would again, uh, like everyone talked about, it would depend uh, on uh, the policy to policy, how the policy is worded and what kind of extensions uh, are included. But some of the very quick things that, you know, the client can uh, go through with the insurer or with their broker consultant is uh, how the uh, premium clawback situations uh, are under the policy. So, for example, if uh, you're a client, you might be expecting your stock levels to drop uh, during this uh, whole scenario. So, if you have uh, stock declaration clauses, it might be uh, good to discuss with the insurer and see if there are any refund opportunities that are available. Then similarly, if you had declared, you know, uh, a certain gross profit value uh, in the beginning of the year, pre-COVID situation, your gross profit figure might be uh, quite different today. So it might make sense to review that figure again and see uh, what kind of discounts or what kind of refunds are available for adjusting uh, your uh, business interruption value is more closer to what the uh, actual expectations uh, uh, now exist. Uh, in terms of claims, you know, uh, uh, we've what we've done and what we've seen a lot of our underwriting partners do is we've seen them utilize more and more of you know digital services of even transferring claims to. Uh, accounts uh, it's made the process a bit uh, easier for for everyone and people have started you know accepting uh, digital documents uh, such as the uh, loss uh, loss vouchers etc so uh, again i think the idea is how much we are able to empathize with our clients during this uh, these times that we have over here and try to make their lives uh, as easy as possible and our lives as easier as possible during this time. So I think that should answer your question. Thank you very much. Um, so we have uh, now we'll go to the question and answer session. Um, so let me check if we have um, started receiving questions. Yes, we have questions. The first question um, 
Khuram Sahib with you. Uh, Asad Khan Sahib asked that, you know, um, Lloyd Market developed one product uh, sometime back with uh, Munich Re. Um, would the panel agree that such product um, is likely to get traction for such pandemic covers if, if made available in, in the region in Pakistan? Um, uh, you know, a pandemic co uh, type cover product. Sir, your mic is off. As I already mentioned, the chair, anything is uh, uh, required based on the need it creates. I believe at the moment the need is there, and this is the right time for anybody to customize or develop or initiate any set incentives. And if a product, as I said, Saab has mentioned, is available, then the market, in my opinion, is ready. Just the question of how do we project that product in the market? Uh, people have very short memories. Uh, today we have this pandemic, tomorrow and move forward, nobody will even remember what this pandemic was. So we have a very short time window in which if you want to move ahead and make sure that people who want this product uh, as a cup of available for them, then we should do it on, on, on a very fast track basis. Otherwise, three months down the road, uh, people will start forgetting. Six months down the road, nobody will even remember. So yes, it, I believe it is going to be useful if the product is introduced. Thank you, sir. Thank you very so, much. Jamshed, uh, can I add a few things in this question? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, uh, on the market update side, uh, one of the largest broker is working on to develop some new risk financing options protection scheme. And uh, this particular uh, product uh, is sort of a bespoke product and uh, that will cover both parametric and indemnity triggers. Okay. Uh, this product will cover uh, any specific geographies, any specific pathogen types, uh, pandemics, and uh, uh, currently, however, this product is not available right now for this particular outbreak, but uh, definitely uh, this product can be purchased for future events. So there are some uh, uh, brokers who are uh, currently working on developing some uh, sort of this type of product developing, and uh, hopefully we'll have it uh, in near future. Thank you, thank you. Um, another uh, question. Um, Fasih Khurshid Saab has sent one question that let's say um, I'll come to Ruban uh, for this question. Ruban, if you have a, a delay in startup uh, claim and that delay is aggravated by this COVID-19, um, what will be the parameter for reinsurers or insurers to calculate or to exclude a loss uh, partially? Uh, it's a very uh, difficult uh, question to answer and you know uh, there have been different uh, litigations uh, related to these kind of events in the past as well. So you know where uh, something has been aggravated uh, not because of the primary cause of loss but because of you know a secondary uh, cause of loss. So uh, for for this question specifically, the first answer I'd give is, you know, uh, I think Fassi's a broker, first of all, he needs to make sure that uh, the uh, the cessation of works clause is not, you know, applied on any of his uh, policies or he, he gets some sort of waiver on, on those policies. On the delay in startup question, uh, it will vary. I think it will really depend on the policy wording. I remember seeing one policy wording where, uh, you know, it was specifically mentioned that, you know, uh, it was for a Pakistan specific case that in case there's a, a delay caused because someone could not travel to Pakistan uh, because of visa issues, those days would not be counted, you know, uh, in the BI value. So again, specific policy is, is what will uh, matter. Uh, so, so that I think should answer this question. Thank you. Um, another question from uh, Zahid Mahmood, um, RF to you. Um, as you said, this, you know, this pandemic is a fundamental risk. Um, do, you, do, do you foresee um, emergence of government schemes, uh, government finance schemes um, throughout the world uh, or in some markets uh, like terrorism pool or a flood type of things? Yeah, I think uh, 
there may be uh, some markets where the governments will decide to have some pools because the economy is heavily affected, especially uh, in US and uh, Europe. So there, there might be uh, something in future coming uh, for this. But again, uh, as we see the trend these days, uh, generally governments are relying on the private sector to come to such solutions. And I think ultimately insurance industry will be asked to find the solution and make a product or even if may not make a product to help the government to, to create a pool for this. So I think it's too early to say anything at the moment, but uh, going forward, maybe some, some uh, countries will decide and some governments will decide that uh, the best way to protect for, from such pandemic is to create pool. Uh, I'd just like to add uh, one thing on what uh, Raja is talking about. It's about the industry overall, you know. Uh, we've had different kinds of events uh, globally at, you know, the different stages of time and the insurance industry has always responded uh, with some one solution or the other uh, with whatever the problems uh, that have been presented. So uh, I'm sure one way or the other a solution will be uh, forthcoming. Thank you. Uh, question to Essen. Um, yeah, the question is: uh, Silent risk may have increased in these uh, lockdown days. How much serious is um, is silent risk than normal risk? Um, um. Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, from insurer's perspective, there are two main areas that needs to be focused on silent risk coverages, uh, especially in this uh, pandemic situation. Uh, number one is uh, the maintenance and reliability of the fire protection system available at site. You need to ensure that all available fire protection systems, equipments need to be adequately in the working condition in order to cater for any fire risk uh, uh, coverage. And uh, the other important thing is site security. Uh, which is another important challenge for the underwriters right now. I have seen a lot of uh, questions coming up from the underwriters, especially for the silent risk uh, coverages right now. So underwriters need to ensure that uh, the site management or the site team must have a robust site security plan available in case if there is no manpower available, there is no uh, production facilities are not working right now and the plant is silent. So I think these two main areas are very much concerned about the underwriters these days. Uh, the reliability of the fire protection system on the silent risk and the security arrangements. So these are two main three areas. Thank you very much. Um, another question, we still have time. Um, another question is, um, yes, Khuram Saab, property coverage usually have an Unoccupancy clause of 30 days, 30 to 60 days. During, during this uh, pandemic, are we expecting to see this clause being removed for um, in the region uh, or in Pakistan um, for, uh, for, let's say, for hotels um, for, or in entertainment industry? Sir, your uh, mic is off. I would, I would be a strong advocate of it being removed because under the present circumstances, customers are helpless. The clients, the insurers, they're helpless. It is something that has come from nowhere and they can't do anything to change the situation. Uh, clauses are worded under certain environments. The environment that we're facing today is unusual. So I would encourage insurers to have a holistic view and allow that clause to be deleted so that the insurers may have this uh, comfort of knowing that they are not uh, anti-selected. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so that's it from the question answer. Um, do you have any question, Numan, uh, from your side um, to the panel? Numan, your mic is off. So from my side, um, you know, uh, we, we briefly uh, brushed over, uh, uh, you know, an enabling environment during COVID-19. And I think uh, uh, it's extremely important to uh, reflect 
on how the enabling environments, whether it is work from home, whether it is, you know, uh, resource pooling, whether, you know, it's uh, digital uh, enablement, uh, whatever those, uh, you know, um, functionalities that we have come across uh, during these uh, days, um, you know, I just wanted to sort of, uh, you know, uh, reflect on that and see how, uh, you know, on the property side, uh, since this is, this is an area that, that is of discussion right now, how on the property side, uh, you know, are these um, uh, going to impact uh, any of the underwriting capabilities um, or for that matter, uh, you know, do you foresee uh, process efficiencies coming into place when it comes to underwriting uh, or, or the administration uh, of, of what, uh, you know, of, of how to sort of serve your customers. Uh, and, and one more thing attached with that uh, is, is one thing uh, I picked up from uh, the conversation from I think Essen uh, is around uh, you know the uh, silent risks of uh, you know maintenance side, and I think when it comes to the uh, you know the enabling environment of uh, IoT, uh, the Internet of Things, I think a lot of these uh, um, industry 4.0 related initiatives are are in in play in the industry. So wanted to have your uh, you know expert opinion on whether you have come across these things or not. Uh, yeah, uh, about silent risk, uh, definitely uh, it's very difficult for the underwriters to uh, underwrite these type of risk uh, because there are very much uh, a lot of challenges available in the silent risk exposure. So underwriters need to uh, focus on very limited coverages. But uh, like uh, there are four main areas which underwriters usually provide covers like uh, uh, on the flex apparel and to some extent on the net cat exposures. Uh, but uh, you know, and, and, and the technological wise, uh, uh, there's not such, uh, not so many uh, technologies available for the underwriters. But uh, uh, I think uh, there are some uh, risk engineering uh, expertise available uh, on the digitalization of uh, identifying the risk management areas. Like uh, uh, they have some sort of uh, uh, digital softwares available like uh, Zoom cameras, uh, uh, you know, uh, the drones, uh, the drones are very much used by the risk engineers to uh, assess or identify the risk uh, digitally in the remote sites. Uh, so I think uh, uh, it's a very, you know, uh, it's a very early stage right now uh, for the underwriters and especially for the risk engineers to utilize technology in these particular areas, especially on the side of risk assessment and underwriting uh, such sort of risk uh, silently. Thank you. Would you like to add anything, uh, Khuram Saab, on that? Yes, I would like to. My concluding comments would be that, uh, as I already said, uh, people around us have very short memories, and insurance anywhere in the world is transacted on the basis of need. Today, we have a need of such a situation, of such a product that can address the pandemic issue. But if you recall uh, the events of 9 11 and the assassination of Ben Ali Bhutto, most of both those events created the need for terrorism insurance. If you recall the flood of uh, 2010 and uh, earthquake of 2011, both the events created the need for uh, uh, atmospheric perils. But now, if you look back, that need has diminished. It's not that the exposure has reduced, the exposure is still there, but the need has diminished. So, what I would suggest, and I would conclude by that the responsibilities lie with us, the professionals in the insurance industry, be it insurer, reinsurer, broker, that the need is maintained and the product is made available so that whenever something happens, the insured, who are the ultimate objective of the whole value chain, are protected and identified. Thank you so much. Jamshed, your mic is off, I think. Yeah, sorry, we have a couple of um, more questions coming in. Um, uh, to Ruban, um, another question from Asad Saab. Do you foresee further adoption of technology will help not only insurers to rate risk appropriately and to offer best customer service when required, such as in these uh, COVID environment or uh, similar environments? 
Um, I think uh, technology will basically, uh, I'll divide that question into uh, three different parts. You know, uh, the way that uh, we are underwriting now, uh, obviously there are certain rooms for uh, efficiency improvements. Now, whatever efficiency improvements that we, we can do in terms of whatever processes we are following, uh, that can, you know, uh, assist the, the end process at the end of the day. So th that is obviously beneficial from a customer uh, service point of view. The second, I divide the property into two different sections. You have your commercial properties and then you have your residential or personal lines uh, property. Now on commercial lines, uh, obviously uh, there are different angles that we need to uh, look at, like Essen was talking about, uh, can we collect uh, information in a better way by let's say utilizing drones or other technologies per se. But there is a lot of scope on the personal lines, which I think forms a very small part of uh, uh, the whole book that we have over here. Uh, all over the world, you have you know new models coming in, either peer to peer or uh, other models that you know make insurance buying much easier. Your customer tomorrow will be a lot of millennials. They buy everything differently. So uh, I think uh, that's a target market that you know everyone can tap in for, especially the detail lines, and personal lines of business. Thank you. Um, we have four minutes. Um, uh, Numan, uh, you know, I think uh, that's it from our side. Uh, would you like to wrap, wrap up? I, I would certainly uh, like to sort of uh, thank everybody who has joined in. Um, and uh, it, it's a pleasure to have uh, all of you. And, uh, you know, uh, you've also, you know, from, from your, uh, uh, you know, engagements, you've taken time and, uh, um, Arif Sab, you've actually joined all the way from Saudi. So, uh, you know, uh, thanks, for, uh, special thanks for you, uh, to you as well. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, just for the audience, um, uh, today was a third session um, and we covered uh, property uh, uh, related risks and uh, the impact of, on COVID, uh, from, uh, of COVID on the property uh, line of business. Um, we do intend to have, uh, you know, further sessions uh, uh, that will inshallah begin just after Eid. Um, sometime in the first week of June. Um, and one of the exciting, uh, you know, uh, webinars uh, that we uh, plan to sort of hold will be on our uh, leading product line, the Vitality product, which is a health, uh, uh, health tech product and uh, health uh, related product with the, under the banner of IGI Life Vitality. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we expect, um, you know, uh, we, we in fact request all of you to take uh, time and and you know join us on those sessions because again in these testing times a lot of things have actually uh, uh, you know uh, left uh, room for us to sort of review and and see uh, how we can uh, reach out to our customers engage with you guys and communicate effectively. Um, last but not the least, I think the most important part for me is my team. Uh, I think they are the ones who have created the magic, uh, and I think. Uh, I need to thank uh, Usman Khalil, um, Jangir Nazar, and Madhya Ahmed for being a huge support uh, in setting up these events. Um, uh, the recording of these events uh, will be available offline uh, for you to review at your own leisure. Uh, please do go through it, even if you have joined us at a later stage. Um, and uh, once again, a special thank you to our panelists. Uh, who have, uh, you know, who have given us, uh, you know, great insights for the session today. So with that, I close the session today and, and, and thanking everybody for their patience and, uh, you know, and, and presence. Thank you so much and uh, Allah Hafiz. Thank you very much. And thank you, the panelists, especially Puram Sahab, Brokhan, Raja Arif and Essence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.